Today we're going to talk about the hash reference in Excel. A common question I get is, what is that hash sign I keep using in my videos when I'm referencing cells? Well, if you have Microsoft 365, you already have that hash sign and you should be using it because it's going to make your life a lot simpler. Let me show you how. Here I have some sample data, which is not formatted as an Excel table. First of all, let me show you where you can't use the hash sign. So you can't just go type in an equals, reference A3, put in hash, and expect your results to spill and pick up the range from A3 to D18. That's not going to happen. And the reason it doesn't happen is that this is not a spilled range. You can only use the hash sign when you reference a range that's spilling. Now, how do you recognize spilled range? Well, let me show you. First of all, let's create a spilled range. How do you do that? Well, spilled ranges are generally created by using formulas that spill. So for example, if you use the sort function or the unique function, these are functions that spill. If you're curious to find out more about these functions, I have a separate video about this and I'm going to add the link to it to the description of this video. I also have a complete course that covers all the new functions in Excel 365. I'll add the link to that as well. The only thing we need for the unique function is our range. So let's say I want to get the unique combination for division and region. I'm going to reference this range, close bracket percenter, and this now is a spilled range. I wrote the formula once, I pressed enter, and the result spilled to the next cells. Now, here's how you can recognize the spill range. Number one, it has this automatic blue border. So every time I click away, it's gone. Every time I click inside it, it's there. And number two is that the formula is only living in the first cell. So that's the top left-hand corner. Take a look at the formula bar. The formula is dark here. When I go to the next cells, it's grayed out. This is how you can recognize the spilled range. Check this out. If I try to remove any part of this range, so I'm just going to press backspace here and press enter, it doesn't let me do it. If I press delete, it doesn't let me do it. The formula can only be removed here. Here, if I press backspace and press enter, my formula is gone. I'm going to press control Z to go back. Now, instead of just removing it, if you type in something over this, so let's say I type in subscribe, which is a good time to let you know that if you're not subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing, especially if you're finding yourself learning new topics here. Now, if I type this in and I press enter, I get a spill error here. Why? Because my formula wants to spill and there is a blockage. Now, if I remove this blockage, I get back my results. Now that we know what a spilled range is, how can we use the hash sign? Well, if you're referencing a range that has this property that is spilling, that's when you can use the hash sign. So here, if I go in and type in equals G3, and now I put in hash and I press enter, my range automatically spills and it picks up everything. Now the advantage of using the hash sign is that the moment this original range here expands, this range is going to expand automatically. So for example, if I go back to my sample data here and create a new combination, so Productivity Europe, let's change this to Productivity Australia, and I press enter, I get that combination pop up here automatically, and this part, my hash reference, automatically expanded as well. Okay, so I'm going to press Control Z to go back. Now, if you take a closer look at our first formula, notice I'm referencing A3 till B18. So I'm using direct cell referencing. This is not an Excel table. This means that every time I add something new to this, if I add in health and I put in Europe, obviously this range is not going to expand. But if I go in and manually expand it, and then press enter, the second range will automatically expand because I'm using the hash sign here. Now, best practice is to use Excel tables because you're not going to have this problem. Your range will automatically expand 
if the source is a table, and this is not because I'm using a special function like unique, this works with any Excel function. That's why it's great to use tables as your source. So if we transform this into an Excel table, we don't have to worry about this part anymore because our range will automatically expand. Let me just press Control Z to go back. Now, before we do that, and I show you how spilled ranges behave with tables, let me show you one other thing. Remember when I typed in this formula, I actually went in and I did G3 and then I put hash. You don't necessarily have to type in the hash here. If you just reference this build range, it automatically puts it for you. So take a look at this. I'm just going to remove this. Now, when I reference this, take a look at the formula bar. It's still G3 to H8. Now, if I expand this and go one more row down, take a look at what happens. It puts in the hash sign for you. Okay, so referencing the whole range gives you that hash sign as well. Let's pause and take a look at a practical application of the hash sign. Now you generally use that inside other formulas. So for example, here, let's say I want to get a unique list for either region, app or division, and I want to make that selection from this dropdown. So if I switch to app here, I get a unique list of the apps and I get an automatic numbering on the side. So if I switch to division, I just have two different divisions. Where does hash come into play? inside the sequence and the count a functions. If you're curious to see what formula I used here, it's a combination of unique index and X match, which is the new version of the match function. Now let's get back to our original example. Let's go ahead and transform this into an official Excel table and see what happens. So I'm going to press control T table has headers and let's go with OK. So now this is a table. The moment I start to add something to this, take a look at my range here. I'll put in health and Europe. It automatically expands because my source is now a table. And how about using hash references inside a table? Well, tables have an inbuilt spill behavior already. So take a look at this. If, for example, I was just adding a new column to this table, and I want to take this number here and deduct one from it. So I'm going to do minus one. The moment I press enter, my results spill. Everything is relative referencing and it's using structured relative referencing inside the table. Now, if instead I go ahead and use the hash sign or write a formula that spills. So for example, let's go and do a unique here and I'm going to reference this column here. When I close the bracket and I press enter, it's going to give me an error. Why? Because my formula is spilling. When it's in this cell, it's trying to write game productivity and health. And then when it's in this cell, it's trying to write the same thing, game productivity and health. It's blocking one another. So you get the hash spill error. This means that you cannot use any spilled ranges inside a table. And the reason for that is that you end up with something that's like a table inside a table, which is something that Excel can't display in this two dimensional environment. We just have rows and columns. It would be nice to maybe get a little table icon here and we could click it and go to a second table that just shows us these three kind of like in Power Query, where you can have tables inside the cells. You can click on them and get to the details. Unfortunately, that behavior can't be displayed on the grid here. Okay, so keep that in mind when you work with tables. Now here I have a bonus tip for you. What if you want to reference the spilled range, but you don't want the whole range back. You just want a specific part of that range. So let's say here, I just want to get column I back of that spilled range. But there are different ways of doing this. One way you can do this is to use the index function. The array is your spilled range. So I'm going to go with I3 hash. I want to include all rows. So I'm just going to skip this argument. And for the column number, I can give back the index number of the column I want returned. So if I just want the first column, I'm going to put one, close the bracket, press enter, and I just get the first column back. 
if I just wanted the second one back, change this to two, press enter, and I get the second one. Okay, so I hope it's clear now what that hash reference is and how it can make your reports more dynamic without you having to worry about updating your source ranges whenever they change. I hope you found this video useful. Do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with Office productivity topics. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.